Hey guys, thank you for stopping by. Um, today I want to talk to you guys about something that sounds simple, but it's not simple. So I want to talk to you about how to inspect a watch, what to look for in a watch when you're approaching a dealer, when you're approaching um, wherever you're buying the watch, you know, flea market, pawn shop, authorized dealer, non-authorized dealer, wherever you're looking at a watch. What are the points you have to focus on right away? Guys, it's something that you have to... It, it has to be embedded in your mind that these are going to be the steps that you're going to take to uh, to inspect that watch and to look at that watch before you start making a deal. So the general rule of thumb that I have, you have three minutes to inspect that watch before you start negotiating. So let me give you a little bit of a backstory. When I was with my father in the jewelry store, I was buying things. And when he started letting me buy things, and I was making a lot of mistakes. I was making a lot of mistakes. Why? Because I was looking at the big picture. I was looking at, at, at the item, at the big thing, but I wasn't looking at the little things. So when the little things started to go bad, that's when we started to spend and lose money. So he would, he would get with me and he would tell me, you have to inspect the big, the big picture, obviously, but you have to focus on the small parts. So I'm going to show you guys how I approach a watch, how I do it, and um, I'm gonna compare it a little bit to a car, okay? So stay tuned, stay with me, I'll show you guys how we do it. We'll flip the camera and I'll show you guys everything I do. Okay, so when we approach the watch, we're gonna look at the big picture. What's the big picture? We're gonna look at our dial, at our hands. I want the hands to match the indices if they're different, they're most probably not original to the to the um, to the dial. Today we're using this uh, what is this a Stoa for um, for a guinea pig. So I'm gonna look at the case. I'm gonna look for pitting. Where's the pitting of the case gonna occur? On the back part, it's gonna occur right here on the corners. So I don't want to see any pitting on the corners. And if I do, I'm deducting price of every single thing I see. You know, I'm just getting all the points I need to start my negotiate my negotiation. So right here, I'm looking for no decoloration. If it's a gold fill, if it's a stainless steel, I want no pitting either or no deep no deep scratches. So the first thing I do when I approach the watch, I'll set it on time. Let's say the time is five o'clock, and I'll give it two wines. That's it. Okay, that way I'm going to make sure the watch is, uh, is, is keeping time. And the second thing I did, I set it on time. So that might be simple, but I'll explain to you why I do these things. We're going to break this watch apart and I'll explain to you why I do this. Okay, so now that I move the hands and I know that the crown will move the hands and I know there's no pitting, you know, I'll wait a minute or two for that minute hand to move. You know, once it starts moving, you know the watch the watch needs work. If I were if I were to set the watch and it was very hard to set, now I know that it hasn't been serviced in a while. You know, that's that's your first that's your first sign that the watch hasn't been serviced. When you try to move those hands and they're very hard. In this case, the hands are very loose. See? They move like butter. So that's what you want. You want a nice, loose, lubricated uh, pinion. Okay. And you gave it two winds. You let it go. You just let it go. See, did you hear that? That means my clicker, the one that's letting the mainspring go around and catching it, that means that's lubricated. That's good. See? And you hear it click. Okay. So that's working. Your mainspring is working. So... What you want to do next is you want to wind it all the way up. See, it's wound all the way up. What am I doing at this point? I am checking for the mainspring to be good. Sometimes, now listen to this guys, especially when you're buying a vintage watch. Depending on where the mainspring broke, you'll be able to wind it once or twice and it will take wind. You know, you'll be able to wind it. But once you get to the fourth or fifth wind, you'll hear a click, click, okay? 
that means that the the mainspring is broken somewhere somewhere in that barrel that will only allow you to wind it once twice or three times and it'll work the watch will actually work but if you keep on winding you get to there where that mainspring is broken and it'll just give you a click and bring you back to zero okay that's why I that's the reason I wind it all the way up to make sure that mainspring is working okay so now we're gonna keep inspect so we're gonna keep inspecting the watch and then we start our negotiation you know so if it has scratches if twenty dollars was the top price I could pay for this watch I'll take five dollars off for the scratches and now if it has a little bit of pitting I'll take another two three dollars away for the pitting it's an example okay I'm using numbers as an example I'm just you know I'll buy the watch I'm, I'm interested in every single watch out there there is no watch that I'm not interested in as as if I could buy it for parts I could buy it for uh, to restore it I could buy it for something but I'm interested in every single vintage watch because I know there's there's gonna be money somehow in that watch okay so then I'll just deduct whatever I, if, if twenty dollars was the maximum I could have paid for this watch now I'm only gonna try to land around the twelve or thirteen dollar range guys so I'm gonna break this watch apart and I'm gonna show you what we're, ch what we're uh, checking for when we do everything okay guys so here's the watch so what were we checking for we were checking for the watch to be running that's why we gave it a full wind okay we see that the watch is running but we saw that we, we were not able to do this when we're buying a watch so we're not able to break it apart that's why the inspecting of the watch is so important if we hear it tick we know it's running if it stops running but it wound all the way up and it ran for three four seconds that means that it, it probably just needs a cleaning see now if we flip it around that's why we're pulling the crown we're doing there and setting it if we're able to do this that means our setting levers are all okay I'm sorry about the camera guys like I said I don't have a, a good camera but our setting levers are all okay and we're able to set the watch that means our gears our hour gear is working fine and let me see if I could take this off there we go I took and that means our pinion our pinion is down here okay our pinion is right here that means our pinion is working fine and it's well lubricated you see it move right there guys so that's my general uh, thing I look at watches if if it's setting correctly that means that I pulled the crown in and out a few times but if it's setting correctly that means that it, it had service sometime in the past especially in a vintage watch or if not they use damn good oils but and I keep pulling and make sure everything is working fine I'm not bringing the crown out with me sometimes when that happens you know they they stripped this lever right here there's a screw on the bottom so they stripped it so now I could that's everything that's going in my head right now you know making sure everything is working properly and this one needs a cleaning actually it stops working you know so that's how I approach a watch guys not only the case not only the dial you know I, I look at everything not only the case not only the dial I'll look at everything you know so guys hopefully you enjoyed this video if it helped you know give me a thumbs up subscribe and um, and I, I'm sorry I didn't do a, a video on Wednesday I was gonna do a video on how quick I changed the crystal of a, uh, a Rolex and I was using a knife the knife slipped and it cut me and I was cursing so much that it wasn't it, the, the video wasn't YouTube uh, YouTube friendly started cursing in English ran out of English then began in Spanish and uh, it was just a big big scandal <laughs> for a little paper cut guys thank you so much for stopping by appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one thank you